Alrighty, we're back to finding the distance from a point to a line. Now, we've already done step one, which was to take our line equation and rewrite it in slope-intercept form so that we could get the slope. In this video, we're going to do steps two and three together. We're going to write the point-slope equation of the perpendicular line, and then we're also going to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. So if you recall, point-slope form is y, oops, sorry, y minus k equals m x minus h, where our point is h k and m is our slope. S-L-O-P-E, -E, that looks really sloppy. All right, and remember, our original slope for our first line was negative three-fifths in this case, but we're taking the negative reciprocal. Now, the negative reciprocal technically means that it's the number that we would multiply negative three-fifths by to get a negative one, which, yeah, but essentially we think about it as just like flipping the fraction upside down. Probably the less mathematical way of thinking of it, but I think it's a little clearer. Okay, let's write our equation. So I'm going to label this as step two plus step three. So y minus a negative seven, which turns out to be plus seven, equals m, our slope. So we take our slope down here, we flip it upside down and change the sign. So it becomes five thirds x minus our h, which is zero. All right. So we've written the equation in point-slope form. That's step two. Now step three, we're going to change it into slope-intercept form. So as you recall, first thing we do is distribute to get rid of the parentheses. And this part over here is just going to stay the same. We're not doing anything over there yet. Five-thirds times x is five-thirds x. And five-thirds times zero is just five-thirds. Or I'm sorry, zero. Duh. Then we're going to subtract seven from both sides. And we get y equals... 5 thirds x minus 7. So this is the equation of our perpendicular line. I want you to go ahead and pause the video for a moment. I want you to try and write the line equation for yourself on the next one and change it into slope-intercept form. See how that goes for you. All right, so let's see how well you did on this one. Step 2 plus step 3. So first we've got to write our equation. y minus, and here's our point, h, k, so it's y minus 7, equals, our original slope was 1 8, so we're negative 1 8, so we're going to flip it upside down and change it positive, and it becomes 8, x minus, this is going to be x minus a negative 4, so it turns out to be x plus 4. Now we're going to change this into slope-intercept form. First thing we do is distribute. And the y minus 7 just stays over here. I haven't done anything with it yet. 8 times x is 8x. And 8 times 4 is 32. And then we're going to go ahead and add 7 to both sides. And we get y equals 8x. And 32 plus 7 is 39. So our equation for our perpendicular line is y equals 8x plus 39. So I hope that worked out for you. All right, so try out the last one on your own. Our original slope was negative 1 8. Our point is going to be hk. All right, so see what you can do. Pause the video for a moment, try it out on your own. Okay. So step two plus step three. Our point-slope equation is y minus k, k is a 7 here, equals slope m. Now, our original slope was negative 1 8, so the negative reciprocal of negative 1 8 is a positive 8 over 1, or just positive 8, x minus, and our h is negative 3, so that's going to be x minus a negative 3, or x plus 3. So there's our equation in point-slope form. First thing we're going to do to change it into slope-intercept is use the distributive property. So over here, nothing changes. 
8 times x is 8x, and 8 times 3 is 24. Now we're going to add 7 to both sides, and we get y equals 8x, and then uh, 24 plus 7 is 31. And there's our equation in slope-intercept form of our perpendicular line. I hope you got that right. If you didn't, well, go back and figure out why. Now, um, for each of these now, our next step is to take the expression on the right-hand side of each of these equations, so negative 1 eighth x plus 1 and 8x plus 31, set them equal to each other in order to figure out what x value makes both of these equations true. And that will tell us the x-coordinate of their point of intersection. And this is where it's going to start getting kind of ugly, and you're really going to want to have that calculator that does fractions. All right? So we'll take a look at that in the next video.